The 1990s was such a great time for television. Network television was taking chances with edgier content, the typical family sitcom stopped being quite so typical, and we were introduced to the single girl in the big city many, many, many times over. It's easy to remember that shows like Friends, Seinfeld, Frasier, ER, and so many others that stood out during the 1990s. There were a lot of great shows that also defined this era, yet were on the air for such a short period of time that they ended up just being little blips on the radar. The following is a list of shows that today are recognized as great television shows that lasted a criminally short amount of time and came to an end well before they should have. With hindsight being 2020, and I'm not talking about the 2020 series on ABC, here are 10 of the most underrated television shows of the 1990s. First off, an honorable mention, Legends of the Hidden Temple. The classic children's adventure game show lasted only three seasons on Nickelodeon from 1993 to 1995. However, it maintained a loyal fan base throughout all of those years. The short-lived series avoided this list because it was revived for the app Quibi, but then reformatted for the CW in 2021. The original series, in addition, can now be seen on Pluto TV today. Long live the Hidden Temple. And now, the main list. Number 10, Amazon. No, this isn't the Jeff Bezos biopic nobody asked for. This was a popular syndicated series that ran for one season at the bitter end of the decade. Amazon, created by Jaws author Peter Benchley, is about an airliner that crashed in the Amazon rainforest with six survivors. The show is about their journey for survival as well as their engagement with the locals and their adventures as they make do with their new lives. Yes, there are certainly similarities to the ABC series Lost that would premiere five years later, but that's neither here nor there. Amazon did apparently end on a cliffhanger, although it was decided not to continue with a second season. Essentially, the show took a nosedive. Too soon? Number 9, House of Buggin. When the very popular series In Living Color was cancelled in 1994, Fox decided to go with a Latino-themed sketch comedy show to be its spiritual successor. Hosted by John Leguizamo and starring an all-star majority Latino cast, House of Buggin was a fun show with some pretty memorable sketches. However, the show did see slipping ratings throughout the first season and was cancelled after 10 episodes, maintaining its high quality throughout. Number 8. Christy Period pieces can be some of the most popular shows on television and Christy was no exception. Starring Kelly Martin as the title character and featuring an all-star cast including Tyne Daly, LeVar Burton, and Tess Harper, this series based on a novel of the same name had a loyal fanbase and was well-liked among its viewers. However, the show was cancelled after only 21 episodes due to the show's high budget and CBS aiming for a younger demographic. The plus side is that in 2000, PAX TV was able to commission three made-for-TV movies to wrap up the story. Number 7, Flash Forward. Another great show, another short life. Flash Forward was a coming-of-age series from the 1990s considered the first Disney Channel original program. Two tweens who grew up as the closest of neighbors live their middle school lives while remembering what it was like growing up as kids. The series only lasted one 26-episode season, yet maintains a respectable 8.0 on IMDb. Number 6. Eerie, Indiana The popular yet very short-lived horror series might have been a bit ahead of its time as it only lasted one season during the 91-92 year. This NBC show about everyday people living around the supernatural and other unworldly events lasted 19 episodes before experiencing a cult following in syndication on the Disney Channel and later Fox Kids. The series created enough of a fan base that a spin-off titled Eerie Indiana The Other Dimension premiered on Fox Kids in 1998, but it too only lasted one season. Number 5. Sports Night Aaron Sorkin needs no introduction, writing many outstanding screenplays in the 1990s. His first foray into television came in 1998 with Sports Night, a sitcom loosely based on ESPN's SportsCenter. 
With a topic near and dear to my heart, the show focused on the insanity of live television while exploring the lives of these characters featuring an outstanding ensemble cast. Even though the show still attracted a loose average of 11 million viewers each week, ABC still cancelled the series after two seasons. Although willing to be picked up by several other networks, Sorkin decided to focus instead on a new project, The West Wing. And the rest, as they say, is history. Number 4. Salute Your Shorts Considered today to be one of the ultimate cult television shows, Salute Your Shorts was a sitcom produced for Nickelodeon between 1991 and 1992. The summer camp sitcom starring Blake Soper, Danny Cooksey, the recently departed Kirk Bailey, among others, was well-loved during its limited run on Nickelodeon, but ultimately suffered an untimely fate. The show was cancelled due to the cast and crew supposedly being unwilling to relocate from Los Angeles to the Nickelodeon studios in Orlando. Nevertheless, the series lasted 26 episodes and is still seen as a cult classic to this day, thriving in reruns on Nickelodeon. Number 3. The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. One of the biggest missed opportunities in TV history, The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. is a beloved show from Fox that aired for one season between 1993 and 1994. Just listen to this premise and tell me what you think. In this comedy western, Bruce Campbell plays Harvard-educated lawyer turned bounty hunter Briscoe County Jr. when he is hired to find the murderers of his father, U.S. Marshal Briscoe County Sr., played by R. Lee Ermey. What on earth could go wrong with that story? Well, maybe that was the problem. A show of this nature might not have been able to attract a wide audience and was relegated to Friday nights. Television viewing options were much more limited then, so to keep an audience on the most social night of the week was going to be a big uphill battle. Nevertheless, the show maintains a substantial 8.4 on IMDb. Number 2. My So-Called Life One of the most beloved teen dramas of the 1990s, My So-Called Life ran from 1994 to early 1995 before being unceremoniously dismissed. On this show starring a pre-Romeo and Juliet Claire Danes and an up-and-coming young actor named Jared Leto, this show was one of the first and only shows of its nature to cover then-taboo subjects that even after-school specials of that era were afraid to touch. It was a wildly important series that audiences just weren't flocking to. The series happened just before the teen drama really caught on on network television. Not to mention its time slot opposite Friends and Mad About You on NBC, and Living Single and Martin on Fox just didn't pull in a big enough audience for any demographic, and it just lasted one short season. Had this show been greenlit even a year or two later and not aired on such a tough night, or even aired on a different network, things might have been very different. And the number one most underrated TV show of the 1990s, Freaks and Geeks. Easily one of the most heartbreaking cancellations in television history, Freaks and Geeks is a show that should have never had a bad reputation. But even with high ratings and a passionate fan base, it only lasted 18 episodes. The Paul Feig created series which was produced by Judd Apatow and included Linda Cardellini, Seth Rogen, James Franco, and Jason Siegel was cancelled because it wasn't at friends level ratings and the boarding school educated president of NBC Entertainment Garth Anseer said he didn't understand public school life in what might be quite possibly the most tone deaf statement ever made. Today, Freaks and Geeks is widely considered to be one of the greatest TV series of all time, has an 8.8 .8 on IMDb, and yet only lasted one season. This show deserved so much better.